the organs we work with in, in the blue energies are the kidneys and adrenals, the bladder and the urethra and vagina and the urethra and penis. And the urethra and penis and vagina, they're more kind of the, the really quite deep earth energies for it, they're the earth for it anyway, and the bladder, much more emotional center, um, has a kind of a female quality, it's a bit like the heart for the um, blue energy circuit. And then we come up to the kidneys, they're a bit higher energy and they're a bit more like the lungs. And then when you come to the adrenals, these connect the nervous system and the brain and are kind of the, the higher energies for that circuit. And um, this particular circuit is conflicted. I wasn't going to say that, but is conflicted a lot in people. Um, with the... Uh, adrenals really in the when we lived in nature you know it was pretty clear fight or flight um, but within the way we live now that that's not clear at all um, and, and you can't fight or flight a lot of times and quite often there's fear and you're held there because you're not able to get out of the situation. You can't fight back, you can't run away. And not just in kind of a, a physical thing, but at work or in social situations uh, within what we edit out of conversations or within what is correct or not correct within society. So we, we end up not being able to do either of those and that loads up in the adrenals. Uh, and also just the amount of stress people are under through all sorts of different things that, that didn't used to be there. We, how much they affect us, I don't really know. But you have all the radiation from Wi-Fi, cell phones. Now you've got 5G. You've got the electricity in, in your house. So you've got all of that. Then you've got the toxins in the food. And then everyone living a new life on the internet. Um, and this stresses out the system in, in one level or another, and it, it loads up a lot in, in this blue energy circuit. Um, and specifically, there is that, there is the fight, flight, uh, I was gonna call it a syndrome, I don't know if it is, the, the flight, fight, flight syndrome. Anyway, that is there. But also, especially for empaths, healers, people who work with other people, carers of one form or another, or just sensitive people, um, you can load up stress in the bladder. For some reason, this hits on the bladder. And if you don't dis discharge that stress, you can become used to it and it builds to a level and it crystallizes and it builds more and then it crystallizes again. You end up with the, the bladder area just permanently um, under stress. And that divides this circuit. The kidneys and adrenals can't earth because the energy is coming down and the penis, the va vagina and urethra would be able to earth it, but because of the stress in the bladder, it can't get through an earth. And the other way, the 
energy, the potency, the sexual energy from the vagina, penis and urethra, that can't rise through the circuit because of the energies in the bladder or the stress in the bladder. So on a kind of more negative, if you want to call it that, or on a charge level, that it is an organ of stress. But when you release that charge, then it becomes an organ of deep relaxation. This is what you get after two or three days of lounging around in a spa, if, if you're lucky enough, is that there's that feeling that you keep letting go of layers of stress and then that strongly relates to the bladder and then at a certain point the kidneys and adrenals can start offloading. And before that point, the only alternative for that energy is to rise, for the kidneys and adrenals, for the energy to rise up through the system. So, um, seeing the energies do seem to be sitting into the bladder, we, we will be working a lot with that and just see if it feels right. If it feels right to move through all of them, we will. But I just get the impression that we're just going to clear through that area and somehow drop into a relaxation. If that's all we did in this webinar was to get used to that and keep offloading that stress and to drop into a relaxation, that would be a huge thing on its own. I think, you know, the whole of civilization, climate change, you know, is stressing out definitely the whole of the youth. Certainly, I look round and see all of these fires and floods. <laughs> Everyone, everywhere seems to be on fire or, or under six feet of water. There, there doesn't seem to be much in between at the minute. So there, there is this ex existential stress uh, as well. Um, how true it is, I, I don't know, but it's there in the media and it's there in, in the thought processes. And on that level as well, just the psychic load of everything going off around all of the time, and with COVID, and now if we're coming out of COVID, I'm not sure, you know, now there's the stress around vaccines, what's gonna happen next, have you still got a job or not? You know, there's a lot, lot of uncertainty. So being able to drop into a, a, a space of just relaxation is quite a formidable thing um, these days. Um, so in a way, you don't have to go to somewhere peaceful, particularly, or a spa or a meditation facility, you can just work with the bladder and just keep letting it released. And there is the emotional content. There can be a lot, sometimes a lot of charged emotions from childhood of a lot of kind of spanking on, on the pelvis and the sides of the pelvis loads up in, in the bladder and you know, this can lead to wedding beds and things like that. And that, in a way, is the tears coming out in a different way at night. So it is has got an emotional quality. It is the heart for that circuit. And it can hold the em emotional qualities of what has happened to us. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go through it today. I'm just, just getting some information coming through. Uh, I've got my eyes closed. Um, but we will start off with just working through the different energies and then working into, or we'll work through the deep earth energies in the back of the cranium then the fire energies through the, the front, what I now call the balance point bone, the front 
through this area, then the yellow energies then will drop into the blue energies. I'll show those in, in a moment. But I also want to address how this works through the brain. Or, or in this case, the, the, the cranial fluids. I'm just, where it relates to in the cranial fluid, you have kind of two places that cranial fluid is produced in the, in the brain and spine. One is from the, through the endothelial cells around the capillaries. I'm changing the names because the names at the minute lead into a way that for me is kind of an old paradigm now and you can't help but fall back into that way of viewing it. So I'm going to change the names of the, the, the fluid within the cells of the brain. It's normally called the interstitial fluid and this is normally in the ventricles is normally called the cranial fluid but that divides it and produces a picture where people think that cranial fluid does not flow between the cells of the brain does not go into the cells of the brain that they are separate it causes a divide and it is very different to how I view it so I've renamed it and the fluid that's produced from the endothelial cells around the capillaries within the brain are called endofluid and the fluid that is created in the ventricles in the choroid plexus in the ventricles that is filtered out through the ependymal cells in exactly the same way it's filtered in exactly the same way it produces exactly the same fluid I've called that epifluid so you've got endofluid and epifluid they're exactly they're both 99% water and then the 1% most of the 1% is oxygen glucose and salt which makes they're at least 99.9% similar I'm not sure what the extra point one of a percentage but I've never seen anybody come up with any genuine anything to say there's anything different between those fluids and the cranial fluid is not perceived as being food it's perceived as being something separate so all of that oxygen is not used all of that glucose is not used all of that salt is not used it just flows around the brain carrying all of that and leaves by the venous blood supply which as far as I'm concerned is ridiculous now I'm not sure how it's taught now but when I did my cranial trainings that was how it was shown to me maybe very different now but I'm just going to do it as my view and both of those together for me they mix together I'm calling that the cranial sea so the whole environment of those fluids mixing together through the whole brain through the whole spine I'm calling the cranial sea so there we have see it very fluid inside the brain and then you've got a ventricle here which is a space full of just cranial C this is full of cranial C the whole thing is pretty well a C you can see all the cells they're not really joined together very strongly they're much more like seaweed connecting each other together with tentacles now what the blue energies seems to relate to even though the constituents may be the same and as far as I'm concerned the epifluid flows into the brain the endofluid flows into the ventricles they mix it all becomes the cranial sea anyway but the space where they say the cranial fluid goes the space 
around the spinal cord, around the brain, in the ventricles. This all seems to relate to the blue energies. The cranial sea, the placement of it, even though it's the same fluid, the placement of it gives it that energy of the blue energy circuit. The placement of the fluid within and between the cells in the brain and between the cells in the spine, this much more seems to relate to the lung energies. So today we're working with it as it travels around the spine. So I'll just show you some pictures of that so you can get an idea of this space. So there we have the ventricles, there's two, one in each hemisphere. These are the lateral ventricles. This comes into a third ventricle in the middle. This is side on, it makes a big diamond when you look from the front and then that as the fourth ventricle and that continues down the whole spine. Now here you see that front on. Let me show you, there's the top, there's the lateral ventricles, the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle that's a diamond, that comes down the inside of the spine and that mirrors. You've got the kidneys and adrenals coming together into the bladder, coming down into the penis vagina. Maybe if I turn it sideways, you can see they kind of mirror each other and energetically connect there. So there's that. Which is, these are, I just painted these about 10 years ago just so I could depict how I visualized I'll turn it sideways so I can get a picture. There's a side, there's a front view at the bottom and a side view at the top of the ventricles, including going down the spine there, just so you get a picture. You don't have to remember the names, it's just a picture. Here we have it coming down the spine so the it's much wider so that I could get it all in and I put all the nerves in. This was to show the nerves. But the dural sheath is around the outside. Then you've got a layer of cranial C outside of the uh, central nervous system, outside of the um, spinal cord here. And then you've got the normal or the also a different, or oh, still, still cranial C inside that, but you've got the outer layer here for the blue energies in the spine and then around the outside of the brain. So it's between the dural tube surrounds it here and the dural tube surrounds it, sorry, dura surrounds it there and you've got it in there. Uh, and interestingly, when we were working with the yellow energies, the esophagus was relating to the dural tube running down the whole length of the spine that's containing all of that. The stomach was relating, you know, because the cranium is kind of round, the spine is long and thin, so you've got the esophagus was relating to the dural tube in the spine, and then the stomach was relating to the dura in the brain. So you've got this round bit and this long bit, and then in the, you've got that in the stomach. And it's similar in the blue energies. The penis, vagina, and urethra, which is long and thin, they relate to this cranial C that's around the spinal cord right down to the bottom of the spine. In, in the spine and then the bladder more relates to the cranial C around the brain. So those organs match each other and in the stomach or in the yellow energies it's the dura of the cranium and the dura of the spine. In this one it's the cranial C in the spine and the cranial C in, in the head. Let's just carry on a bit and just show you some more pictures. 
so here we have it now I've drawn the thalamus here and these are this is this is from the front and these are the um, two halves of the cerebellum that it is in kind of some of it is in 2d and some of it's in 3d these are kind of more 3d the thalamus does stretch back and out and the lateral ventricles do wrap themselves around the thalamus and that drops into the third ventricle inside the thalamus and then it comes down into the fourth ventricle see in the fourth ventricle it's this diamond shape here and then that carries down the whole spine this part here this more relates to the kidneys on either side then as you come into this front lobe of it that more relates the adrenals when it drops into here I'm not a hundred percent sure on this it's not the bladder it drops into the heart but it's not it's not the fire energies how we normally perceive the heart the where the cranial or where the see I keep on going to the old language where the where the cranial seed travels down the nerves this travels through the myelinated glial cells and makes capillaries and these are also part of the blue 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 circuit the nervous system is also part of the blue circuit and it's how the nervous system is connected to the heart and you get this strong connection from the adrenals to the heart where the adrenals go off and you get these palpitations of the heart and it's that feeling of the adrenals and the nervous system connection to the heart I couldn't understand it before because it was definitely dropping into the heart but it was staying blue and then I realized it was the ner nervous system connected to it and the cranial sea in the nerves that energy in the heart and then the fourth ventricle the diamond that's where it drops into the bladder and then as soon as it comes out of that but it's quite amazing as soon as you come out of that bottom diamond this connects into the urethra and penis vagina and travels all the way down the spine 